hello there. Welcome to another episode of Pine Talk. My name is Justin, but all the daddies call me Porky of the Pine. My name is Brian. You can find my username 33YN2 in your local phone book. And this has been an eventful month. I, I know I say that every month, but this one actually... Wow. I spent a lot of money. <laughs> are, are you sure? I, th- I thought last month was the actual wow. Yeah, I thought so too. And then, um, you know, $600 later. Uh, <laughs> oh, what'd, you, what'd you spend your money on, huh? <laughs> um, I, I, well, we're going to talk about that uh, as we get into rapid fire. Postmarket OS Stable has released version 21.12. This is including SXMO 1.0.6, Plasma Mobile Gear 21.12, full PinePhone keyboard support, and an upgraded TTY escape build. SXMO on Postmarket OS Edge has released version 1.7.0. This is including visual voicemail, MMS improvements. On Sway, there is a better volume and brightness display. Now, instead of numbers, you get a nice, pretty little bar. And there are other various improvements throughout all of SXMO. Finally, the PinePhone Pro is available. If you order it today, it will ship after Chinese New Year, which should be late February. OpenBSD now boots on the PinePhone, however, there's still a lot of work to be done to actually make it usable. The PinePhone keyboard, LoRa back, fingerprint reader, and wireless charging add-ons are all available in the Pine64 store now. InfiniTime 1.8.0 has now released, which includes secure pairing with a passkey for the BLE connection, optional hourly chimes, you are now able to shake your watch to wake the screen, which I have enabled on mine. A weather service API has been added so that future versions of InfiniTime might be able to include a weather app and a watch face widget. And there is a BLE file storage API that now allows companion apps to read and write data for the watch's storage. This will be useful for custom graphics and watch faces. So with that out of the way, I'd like to quickly mention the PinePhone keyboard now works with the PinePhone Pro. With that aside, I want to voice that my only real complaint with the keyboard so far has been the quality of the keys. The build quality of the plastic is amazing. The keyboard is built like a tank. The thing is you could throw it at a wall like a Nokia phone and it will destroy the wall. Uh, Do note that if you try and open it like I did, I tried to open it when I got mine, uh, you will scratch up the plastic and almost break your iFixit uh, spudgers. So be very careful trying to open the keyboard and don't do it unless you want to have uh, cosmetic damage to the device because it's pretty much going to be a given that you get uh, scratches all over the plastic. With that said, my only real complaint with the build quality is the keys themselves. So the membranes on the top row have an issue where on some keyboards, at least not, not all of them. So, I mean, all of them are affected to some extent, but not all of them are as bad as some are. So the thing is that if you press on a key, it's not guaranteed to register unless you hammer that key down on some keyboards. Which means if you're typing along on that top num row, one, two, three, four, five, six, you might have the four key miss a stroke and you might have the two key miss a stroke. Thankfully, the community has created a solution for that. Avery from the community has designed 3D printed shims that you can put into the keycaps of the keyboard on the top num row and it will solve the key press issue. So it's not a perfect solution. Some keys will have some variation in their feel even after doing the shims. However, it is much, much better than it was. And to be fair, with such a small keyboard, I honestly can't have that many complaints for you know the problems that there are. Is, is it great that there is issues? No, but considering how small this thing is, and it's not that expensive considering there's a huge battery and charger circuitry and everything in there taking up a lot of the cost of that product. Plus it was built from scratch mean the plastics and everything were really expensive to design so the keyboard itself is like a fraction of the cost there and it's not terrible if you saw if you shim up the top row with that said pine 64 is going to be making a new membrane revision to try and hopefully fix out all the issues with the key switches and whatnot but we will have to see what happens i mean time will tell i'm hoping that everything gets solved by just you know a replacement membrane you can pop in there and everything's good but we shall see but it's not the end of the world either way. You have the community fixes you can do, like trying the lubing. If that works, that'd be great. And then the shims, which do work for that numero issue. So with that aside, there's not really that many issues overall with the keyboard. For, other than that, the software works pretty well. It doesn't always work 
reliably with the PinePhone Pro, I will say. My PinePhone Pro was a little bit finicky in that regard. It would uh, sometimes stop charging the PinePhone Pro up, but I'd reboot it. I would go and set the uh, charging rate in the PMIC again, and it would work again. So it is a bit iffy, but I think that's just all software issues on the PinePhone Pro's end because the PinePhone Pro's power management in the PMIC is in a very, very early state. It really needs a lot of work. Um, and that is something that's going to be done soon. Um, I hear Dismic is going to be investigating some of the issues with the PMIC drivers. So that is good news. Now, as someone who is actually on the other side of the keyboard experience, I will say that I have had a wonderful experience with my keyboard. Um, I actually don't have too many, or I don't have to press my top row too hard. It, it is noticeable that I might be typing something quickly, and then I notice that my number actually didn't register which happens to me on my ThinkPad too anyway, but it, for me, has actually let me use my phone as a mini laptop, and I have taken it to work, and I just sit it there on my desk, and it's just an extra mini laptop if I need to jot down a personal note for myself, and I want to use a physical keyboard instead of my phone, I can actually just use that, and then I also have the benefits of being able to SSH or SCP uh, to my ThinkPad or to my desktop or something like that. And I love the feel of the keyboard. I like that it's not like a mushy phone keyboard. It actually feels more like a laptop keyboard. And having shown it to my friends and coworkers, they're all extremely impressed by it as well. So I I personally feel like the build quality is amazing. And while I definitely do acknowledge that these drawbacks or that these small issues are there the only complaint i actually have is that there's not much of a visual cue for the charging of the battery in the keyboard or whether or not the keyboard is supposed to be charging or not or supposed to be charging the phone or not i should say yeah the software end of things needs to be worked out a little bit more but it's not a big deal because you can tell by the fact that once the power runs out of the battery you'll no longer have the pine phone charging up so you can notice that and be, oh, I need to go charge the PinePhone keyboard now. And Now, the other thing is you do not want to use the USB port on the PinePhone um, or both at the same time to charge the device. If you do that, you will cause your keyboard to blow out. People have already had that happen. Um, you will have to use the keyboard uh, USB port to charge it. You can use the PinePhone's port for data, but you do not want to put any power into it. So only for, say, a hub that does USB and the display, but no power going into that hub into the Pine phone. If you do that, you could destroy your keyboard. So that is something that would be nice to have solved as well. And I hear that there is um, suggestions from some community members to implement a hardware change in the Pine phones going forward, the, the original Pine phones, that is, to improve that so that doesn't happen. Same thing with the Pine phone Pro. You do not want to do that. I don't hear any uh, changes right now. PinePhone Pro, you know, other than that, is solid on terms of hardware so far, at least. So, knock on wood that it doesn't have any issues come up and whatnot. Um, it, it seems like it's in a pretty good state. So, moving on, Plasma 5.24 is around the corner, and with it means a new release of Plasma Mobile as well. I've already mentioned in the past, Pine Talks, some of the changes that are coming. Um, one of the biggest changes is the top panel drawer UI being changed. It's it's not only faster now, but it's nicer. It, it looks nicer. It fits better with the rest of the design of Plasma Mobile. Uh, the task switcher UI has also been changed, and it, it is works so much better now. It looks nicer as well. Um, there is a lot of other uh, shell improvements and whatnot that Devin's done. Uh, Devin Lin, uh, uh, he's a community developer for KDE, and he's done a lot of great work on the apps and shell and whatnot of Plasma Mobile. So... But with that said, February 8th is going to be the release state of 5.24. So around that time as well, Plasma Mobile will drop and it will be awesome. Um, the good news is too that the desktop side of things has had a lot of really great changes too. So even on your, say, your Pinebook Pro, you'll have a lot of good improvements to look forward to once the update lands. On another note, talking about shells, the Moai project, part of the KDE ecosystem, has created an early demo of their planned convergent desktop interface called Moai Shell. Now, you might know of these Moai apps if you use Plasma Mobile in the past. These are those 
color custom looking at they don't fit in with the rest of plasma mobile to say the least they have their own kind of theming and whatnot they are very similar in some regards they have a lot of the same features and they share the same technology underlying uh for example uh Mawai kit is actually uh an extension of kirigami which is the app uh, ui that ui library that plasma mobile uses for its applications so it is it is using a lot of the same technology as part of the kd ecosystem but Moai project is going to be going on and making its own entire ecosystem of its own in a way inside of the KD ecosystem. It's going to use this, a lot of the same technology and share a lot of code most likely, but it's going to have its own shell. It's going to use its own apps. And one of their things that they've announced is a demo of their planned desktop interface called Moai Shell. And this will be usable on desktop computers, tablets, and phones. It seems like it's really promising considering what they've shown in the demo so far. This is a very, very early demo, mind you. It doesn't have everything implemented, but it does show you what they plan. And a lot of the features do work already, which is pretty neat considering how early state it is. Now, the roadmap, in my opinion, sounds a little bit ambitious. They expect to have an alpha build of the shell by March and a beta by June. Although it might be possible. Hopefully they can get there because it is already in a decent shape in the demo. Pine64 will be the first company to have their hands on the RK3588. Unfortunately, they do not have any plans for products to use that chip right now, as they want mainline support to be worked on by others in the ecosystem first. But the good news is that the chip itself is insanely powerful compared to the RK3399. The GPU alone is 10 times more powerful. Now, I, I, you might have heard of that already if you've listened to the past uh, Pine Talks and read the blog posts and whatnot from Pine64, but the chip is going to be insanely powerful. Now, the problem is that the GPU drivers are going to have to be mainlined. The, somebody's going to have to create GPU drivers from the ground up, basically, for this new GPU inside of the RK3588. So it's going to take a while for that to get mainlined and everything to be in a usable shape. So I understand Pine64's plans to not make anything until there's something that is reasonably usable that they can put into their products and get going. Um, it is unfortunate, but there is other companies making boards with this chip, so it's not the end of the world because with those chips and with those boards using these chips in hand, people can still do the development in the background until it's in a good enough shape. And then Pine64 can release a product that can further extend the chip and get it into even better shape and make it interesting for use to people. In addition to the PinePhone Bax and the PinePhone Pro, the Pine Note can now be purchased by anyone without a developer coupon on the Pine64 store. However, we suggest that if you are not an absolute Linux enthusiast or developer, that you do not pick it up because while there is a functioning display driver for the e-ink panel on Linux, it is nowhere near complete and it needs many improvements and lacks features such as different waveforms required to do things such as rendering videos and animation smoothly. And if you look at the videos that Dank has posted featuring the actual display of it, you can definitely tell that trying to do much of anything besides look at static images is a very bad experience from a consumer side. So it's nowhere near daily use ready. However, if you feel you are ready to take on the challenge of getting this thing ready for consumers, then it is there and it is available for $399 US dollars plus shipping. So one last little bit before we end this is that Jala, the company behind Selfish OS, says that the PinePhone port of their OS, Selfish OS, accounts for more than 40% of their installs. With that said, maybe that means that a PinePhone Pro port is in order, huh? And uh -huh. yeah, that's all that we have for this episode. I do know that there was a lot less discussion in this episode compared to the previous episodes, and in the last one we talked about wanting to have more discussions. However, we did feel with the amount of content that we were providing with this episode that we felt it was better to limit the discussion and just cover more news than anything. But if you have any suggestions on things that we should talk about or, or different ways that we could carry on this podcast, definitely drop them in the Pine Talk podcast channel in the Pine64 Discord, or you can message both me and Brian on Discord or Matrix. Like, like we said before, my name is Porky of the Pine on both platforms, and his is 33YN2 on both platforms. But per usual, Brian, do you have anything? My name's not Sally, and that's it.
All right. Till next time.